Come on, Tony. Where's your so-called expert? You said they'd be here. It's clouding over. I'm in a convertible Z8. I'm going to give them another 10, 15 seconds, and then I'm off. Hey, Joe. Whoa. Who are you? I'm the expert. Wait. Expert? Tony said he was going to send a real expert. Yes, are I'm you... Tony's daughter. I'm the expert. Right, okay. But you do realise this car that we're sitting in is probably older than you. Well, I do know a bit about it. Right, okay. I guess I'll trust you. Well, I know there's only 51 left in the UK. Okay. Only 5,000 were built, which was from 2001 to 2003. Yep. It's a homage to the 507 from 1956. How do you know about that? It shares its S62 engine with the E39 M5. Yes, right. And it was designed by Chris Bangle. But, you know, other than that, I don't know that much. Wow, well, that is actually... That's, that's a lot more than I knew and probably a lot more than a lot of the people watching this knew. So, wow, that's really handy. I can't believe that's just... So, wait, you're Tony Lewis's daughter? Yep, that's me. Cool, well, thanks for that. I'm going to get in this car now and give it a drive and uh, see if it lives up to all those facts and figures. Okay, give it a go. Right then guys, inside the BMW Z8. I can't believe I'm actually driving this. This is like a dream come true. This is honestly a real dream. <laughs> now I really hope that this mic's gonna pick up the sound. I'm sure it's not gonna be amazing because we've got an open top. But we're going to run this video just like I ran the one in the 1M. So it's one take. No mistakes. I can't muddle my words. I'm just going to experience this drive, my first drive in this car, with you guys. And try and explain what I'm feeling. Try and feed back to you guys what I'm feeling. Now firstly, they only made these in left-hand drive. So I'm sitting on the left hand side of this car and it's not the narrowest car in the world it's a wide car the mirrors and stuff are very small there's some blind spots so it's probably not the easiest car in the world to drive around a british a and b road but who cares <laughs> who cares now as anya touched upon this car has got the same engine that was in the M5 of its time, so in the E39 M5, it's got a 3.9 litre V8 that produces around 400 horsepower, or 400 PS I believe. Gives it a sub 5 second 0 to 60 time, which is quick for a manual car, especially back then. I mean, that was like, that was supercar quick. You know, it had supercar performance of, you know, the year 2000 and I can't wait to sort of feel what that feels like nowadays. Now this is, although it's a convertible and it's a fairly big car, it is 1600 kilos, which is quite light. I'm just gonna go around this roundabout once and just sort of feel, it stays very flat, very, very flat. Almost like it's got dynamic sort of chassis, but I'm sure it couldn't have that in its time. Now coming up here, let's wait for it to stretch. You can hear the engine already. We'll get through this bumpy section because it's really horrible. Talking about that, the ride is amazing. Right now, let's floor it in second. Oh. Oh. oh! oh! I feel like my sunglasses are going to fly off my head. Listen to it. And it's instant as well. Instant throttle response, like bang, it's there. You know, naturally aspirated, big V8. There's nothing like that. It's just. And again, like the 1M, this car's obviously got a hydraulic steering rack and it just feels amazing. You know, there's loads of feel there. I was worried that this car was gonna feel a bit big and wallowy. Now, it does feel big and it doesn't feel nimble, but it doesn't feel wallowy. Um, gearbox is a bit trickier than the one in the 1M, but you gotta remember this is, this is like 15 years older than the 1M almost, so there are going to be things in this car that do feel a bit old-fashioned um, but it's lovely oh, 
<laughs> wheel spin then in second. This has got 275 tyres on it, and uh, you know they're, they're really good rubber. It looks looks like it's fresh. It couldn't be the original tyres, although this car has only done 24,000 miles. I mean, it's immaculate in here, and it feels so modern and up to date. Like it's so nice in here. There is a funny little if I kick this flap up. There's a funny little old sat nav thing in there that's terrible. I mean, it's you know it's a real late 90s BMW graphics. Um, but there's a few things in there in the stereo and stuff. But the good thing is you close that, and the rest of it it's kind of timeless. It could be a modern car, you know. It really could be. Listen to that. Oh wow, it's a real muscle car. That's what it is. It's a it's a German muscle car. Okay, got the heel and toe that time. It's a bit trickier, the pedal sort of placement's nowhere near as good as it is in the 1M. But it's lovely, the ride's really good, these roads are terrible, it's really plying. It actually feels, the chassis to me feels pretty good, because in a lot of convertibles, especially of this era, you kind of felt very disconnected. The seat felt like it was on a completely different chassis to the steering rack. Um, but in this one, it's not too bad, there's another McLaren test car or customer car all wrapped up. Apparently there's a flood here. Um, it hasn't rained, well that's a lie, it rained about an hour ago but otherwise it hasn't rained for about <laughs> five months. Um, anyway back to the car. Right we're just going to do it right here next to the old school cafe. Gearbox is a bit notchy but it's just, I think the the gate, like third gear in most gearboxes, is naturally straight up. This third gear is slightly over to the right, so you just got to let it do its thing, not rush it. Oh, that V8 is addictive! What a fantastic engine! Oh, he's pulling over for me. Brilliant. Oh, 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 oh. Look at it! <laughs> it is lovely, and this is all organic sound, you know, that's that's real organic exhaust sound you can hear there. Nothing else, you know, this is way before any orchestrated sound around it, nothing like that. And no, there's no pops and bangs and stuff either, you know, the exhaust systems back then were a lot simpler. They were made for efficiency and power, they weren't made to produce ridiculous pops and bangs like they are these days. That's not to say these days they're better or worse, but... See, yeah, I just can't find second. It's almost like if you try to get over in the gate too far, there's nothing there. That, that's... Hear that! Oh, traction control again. Wow! <laughs> now... Don't get me wrong, this is not an out and out sports car. I think on a circuit or a track, it would feel well out of its depth. And, and in fact, if you really started pushing this car on a public road, on a nice open sort of alpine road, I think it would also feel a little bit ungainly. It's not designed for that though. This is like a serious GT car that still feels good today. It really does. And if it wasn't for the slightly sort of high seating position, I would just be, I mean, this is this is very close to perfection for me, um, for a classic car, you know. I, it's hard to believe this car is nearly 20 years old. 20 years old. This one feels just as tight as I'm sure when it was new. And it just looks fantastic. There's a sports button down here and as far as I can tell all that seems to do is give you a better throttle response maybe it loosens the traction control a little bit but I'm not even gonna look into that you know I'm not even gonna look into trying to turn the traction off in this car because it's worth way too much money and it's not that sort of car you know oh. 
I feel like I'm being injected with a drug at the moment, you know, I really do, and that's what driving's all about for me. This thing's just awesome. I mean, imagine cruising down to the south of France in this car. Imagine going along the Côte d'Azur with the roof off like it is now. Oh, music playing. It's just, it's such a nice place to be. It's such a nice, it's just nice. It's just a friendly car. It is so beautiful. It's got a nice, big, friendly smile face, you know. It's typically BMW. Um, but yeah, very like, very like the original 507 and the more you look at it, the more you can appreciate that. And I think in red as well, you kind of see it a bit more. I've seen lots of white ones and lots of black ones over the years, but this red one is very unusual. Another McLaren. It's just, it's brilliant. So let's just talk a bit about the cabin. So all the dials are in the center, um, a bit like some minis, I guess, uh, or minis were, you know, now they're coming back to here again. Um, but they're all facing me, they're facing the driver. So they're all very driver centric. Everything is very driver centric. Even the gearbox appears to be tilted slightly towards me. Um, so everything's about me, which is which is great and which is what driver's cars are all about. And I think that's why BMW do such a good, you know, good job at that. It's always about the driver. Um, what else? Well, there's very, everything in here is unique as well. As far as I know that, I mean, they must share a couple of bits and pieces, but Everything in here, to my eye, looks like it's uniquely built for the Z8, which is madness when you think about it. I mean, they built less than 7,000 of these globally, so they couldn't have profited much money on them at the time, you know. It was more of a showcase, um, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a James Bond car, that's how cool this thing is. Uh, even things like the key, it's got a lovely plaque on the back of it that says Z8, so it's, it's a typical key of the sort of late 90s. 2000 BMW but it's got a little plaque on it just to let you know that it's it's not just any old BMW bone it's a Z8 and I'm only revving it to about four and a half five it goes all the way to just high sixes red line maybe six 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 seven it, it, it feels like a lazy V8 when you're not booting it, which is brilliant, it's a nice like, but when you really do give it some, it picks up and it really goes. I mean, no wonder the E39 M5 was such a hit, you know, having this engine in it. Again, a car I've never driven. Um, but yeah, other cool things, so we've got, obviously this is a soft top, they all came with hard tops when they were sold to the customers, um, matching their body color, so this has got a red hard top. Uh, but it's got cool things like passenger reading lights underneath the <laughs> rear view mirror, which is just brilliant. And apparently if you turn this, it turns both of them on. Oh, that's so cool. In fact, it turns all the interior lights on. That is brilliant. The electric windows. It's only got one button here, but if you switch the little wing mirror toggle over to the right, it puts that window up and down, which I'll demonstrate now with my camera on it. There you go. It's just brilliant. It's so clever, minimalist really clever third gear 2,000 revs 3,000 revs 4,000 revs 5,000 revs oh and then it really starts picking up above five it really starts going for it in fact it was <laughs> it was tram lining a little bit then um, but the road this road is terrible so you kind of expect that but what a car what a brilliant brilliant car Practical as well, like lots of storage, the boot in the back's really big. Um, what a beautiful, beautiful piece of kit. Really loving it. I'm so fortunate to be able to drive cars like this and also appreciate them, you know? I like classic cars and I've had the opportunity to drive a lot of older classic cars over the years, like old Ferraris and Lamborghini Countaches and those sort of things, but I just don't physically fit in them and I can't physically, in a Countach, I cannot physically drive it because the footwell is too small. I can't put my foot on the clutch, just the clutch, because it touches the brake, etc. So, you know, I think after that, this is this is when this is this is a great. It really is. It's brilliant. And the fact that I've had an opportunity to drive it properly today, it's just been amazing. I'm so pleased, so happy. Just before we finish, we've got to do one more acceleration. We'll do second gear, let's do second gear, uh, 2,000 up to 4,000 reps, so that's 2,000, 3, 4, 5, oh, and then we're off again, it's just, it's 
not as fast as you kind of come to expect these days, but it's fast enough and it makes a fantastic noise. Wow. Listen, I'm gonna finish this video because I could go on and on and on, but I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, massive thanks again to Berry BMW, Tony Lewis, um, Freddie helping me with the filming today, and obviously Tony's daughter, Anya, for giving us all the facts and figures um, at the start of this video. I was not expecting that. So yeah, make sure you check out her YouTube channel as well. She's a very good up and coming vlogger. Um, and obviously will deserves and, and uh, would appreciate all the support she can get. But yeah guys, until the next one, which I've got no idea at this point what that will be, um, but I really hope you're enjoying these modern classic videos and please um, let me know about that in the comments. If you are, give us a big thumbs up. Cheers and I'll speak to you at the next one. off perfect time to get this out for a drive I don't have a watch don't know why I'm looking at my watch make sure you give Anya a follow on Instagram and um, yeah you've also got a YouTube channel yeah, I right run here. my own YouTube channel yep but it's not car based and um, yeah unfortunately it's not car based but hopefully people will like the content still yeah absolutely uh, different type of content but it is it's, it's more of travel vloggy stuff but really cool